I am Virginia Phillips, as you all know, the owner of this group. And today we have Amy Honey. Maybe Jamie will join us. Jamie is her spouse, but also co-owner. But Amy is titled as president of Honey Dare. I appreciate Amy joining us today in this group to give us this exclusive content that we have here that you can't get anywhere else. Amy, welcome to the program. Thank you, Virginia. It's great to be here. <laughs> I appreciate it. I always start these interviews out with a bit of backstories to who you are and how did you end up doing this? This isn't your first gig in your life, but you've ended up here. How did you get to this point? Well, I, um, I have been a personal trainer for years and I've worked in the fitness industry for 26 years. I owned my own gym for six years and I was exhausted and totally burnt out. And, um, you know, on, owning a brick and mortar, what is, I don't recommend it. <laughs> it wouldn't be my first recommendation unless, you know, that's your big dream, then, you know, go for it. But hey, um, so, uh, I was tied down. I was exhausted. I was working 80 hours a week easily and I never got a break. And my husband was exhausted too. He was co-owner with me and, you know, so we went on a journey and decided to write a book. And one of the main things that we also discovered was to really impact people's lives. We, we preached the five elements of health and the five elements of health are exercise, sleep, hydration, nutrition, and emotional environment. But what we discovered was that emotional environment was the most important one. If I can't change your mind, I can't change your body. That is true. That is very true. If you can't change my mind, you are not changing my body. I know that for sure. But how <laughs> you go from running a gym to deciding to write a book that seems to be quite a big leap, Miss Amy? <laughs> well, I had always kind of in the back of my mind wanted to write a book. I like, I'm like constantly going, Oh, that would be a great title. That would be a great book. That would be a great book. And so we ended up going to a seminar and, and, um, on how to publish a book. And when I, when I originally went, Jamie went with me and he, he was like, well, I'm going with you to stop you because you do too much. You have too much on your plate. You can't do it. There's no way you're writing a book. And so by Saturday night in the seminar, he was, looking at me going, you know, this could really tie everything together and give us the freedom that we're looking for. And, um, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So part of what you are doing now is really setting your own expectations with your life and really drilling down what you will do and what you won't do. Explain some of that process to us. You know, it's been, um, it's been a big learning for me. Like, um, one of the things that I realized in this last, well, I've been away from the gym for almost a year and a half now. And one of the big learning lessons for me in that was, um, really setting those boundaries. Like you said, like the, what you will and you won't do and the process for, for that. And, you know, when you're working with people and you're helping people like the way that most of us get into entrepreneurship because we want to help other people. I mean, that's just generally what we want to do. But what I realized was how I really wasn't serving them by allowing them to run their program on me, <laughs> so to speak. Um, I, I let people not pay at my gym because I wanted to help them. I let people, you know, I let people, we call them ask holes because they ask a ton of questions and then they never use your, they never, you know, use, use your advice. And so they would take up all my time with all this advice, but never really do it. And, you know, and so I really, in the end, I wasn't serving them because they didn't get the changes that they wanted and I didn't help them. So what's been really learning for me is really like cutting through it with people like right away and recognizing, you know, when they just want to keep their problems, you know, for another, for lack of a better term, when they're not coachable and when they really want the help. Mm -hmm. So that's been just a very big to, to recognize that. Mm -hmm. I think as you progress in business, you really can identify sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, sometimes those beginners 
because they do ask a ton of questions, but they don't have what I call those high performance habits. When you get up to some elite people, they come into the meeting, they're prepared, they get down to business and they move on. Like they have this agenda. You fully agree with that. I know you work with and pitch to some high performance rollers. So give me some idea of how those meetings are different than the meetings you might have with a client who's first coming into the gym and being the ask hole, as you say they are. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, what's different about these high end clients is you really have to go in with, because look, they can hear a pitch coming mile away. They can hear, they know when you're coming in to ask them for something. So you really got to walk in and give them something. You got to find out where you're going to provide value for them first before you can ever pitch them anything and then have a good, and then build a good relationship. Do you see building the relationship as secondary versus showing them value or does sometimes it switches? No. No, the relationship comes first, but that's part of, that's part of the relationship is, you know, they, they, they have people coming at them all the time. They do want some stuff from them. They do. You know, they want, they, you know, and if you come in with a pitch and, hey, can I just have five minutes of your time? They're like rolling their eyes already, right, at you. They're just like, uh, you know, <laughs> Virginia's laughing because she's like, I know. <laughs> I know. I absolutely know. I do. I do. I do. Yeah. So that's the worst way to come in. So you just, you can, they're approachable too. Like these people are totally approachable. You just have to figure out what, what do they need? What do they want? And, and, and try to provide value for them first. That's how you're going to get next to them. And it doesn't mean money. They have money. Usually it's might be like, gosh, I could really use a connection with something or it could be as simple as that, you know, that you remember what coffee they drink and you have it ready for them the next time that you see them and like, gosh, you remember what coffee I like. And it, it, it can be simple. Right. One, one of the, and if you don't know this gentleman, one of the biggest LinkedIn gurus is Kevin Knebel. His last name is missing an E K E N E B L. K-E-N-E-B-L, Kevin is his first name, and he has this whole rigmarole where he goes in and does crazy things with people. He picks up postcards wherever he goes, puts them in a drawer, and when he's thinking about somebody, he'll write, you know, got blue pants on today, happy birthday, and send it off to somebody, some executive, when it's not their birthday and they're not wearing blue pants, but it is something different. It's entertaining for them, and that is value to them at, at Kevin's level. So you're right, it doesn't have to be something that um, is worth a lot of money, but it can be, we are thinking of you, you're doing a great job, congratulations, and move forward just like everybody else. Great, yeah. great tip. Yeah. So I want you to explain a little bit more to people what it is you are currently building because you are in a pivot right now. We're not going to hide behind curtains. This is the group where we have startup entrepreneurs and they are going to go through their own pivots. So what, what are you looking to do with your business with this pivot in terms of health and wellness for other people? Um, so yeah, I am at a crossroads right now. Um, and I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. It's kind of like making a joke between like, mm, do I want to be a short order cook or a rocket science scientist right now? Like, right. <laughs> trying to figure that out. So, so we have a passion for traveling and we have a passion for, um, health and fitness. Um, we're really good at helping people with that kind of stuff. We, um, we are looking at, um, combining it in such a way, you know? that, you know, travel and health is part of your health. We, we think everything encompasses health. Mm -hmm. So, um, going into businesses, being able to talk and motivate them, being able to, um, to help them create raving fans. So that that's part of it is, is being that personality that a company might need when they, um, might have, uh, maybe a boring concept like finance or something. Cause I mean, finance is kind of boring. And so we, 
<laughs> for some. Not for me, because I like it, but for my husband, who is very... <laughs> I don't know if we have any accounts in the group yet, but that's okay. But there are some people that absolutely love their numbers. You might not be one of them. No, I am one of them, but it's not always fun, right? It's not always, for most people, it's not fun. Yeah. You know, so it's coming in and be, being the face of that fun and, and helping you realize that your whole life is about balance and it's about encompassing health. So, ooh. I think we might um, get an appearance from the Aussie bloke. I love it. Uh, so I hope he joins us. But I, I want to ask you, how did you end up doing, hi, how did you end up doing this? You know, all the things you have pivoted to do, why, why did this appeal to you? And, and if your answer is cash and money, then that's a legitimate answer. But why this space helping corporate America with their employees? Actually, because in the gym, it was very one-on-one -on -one, and we felt that we could impact people on a larger scale. Because if we can go in and change their mind, like I was saying in the beginning, if we can get, if we can change their mind, they'll, they'll change their body. So if we can change that one little aspect for them, the rest will change. Did you tell them about the ninja thought? I didn't tell them about the ninja Ooh, thought. Oh, okay. We all want to get, I don't even know what we're chatting about, but I do know <laughs> that we all have ninja thoughts. And the ninja thought is a sneaky little thought that jumps in there unobserved the moment anything new is presented to you. It drops in and it has an opinion on what you're about to look at. So say for finances, for example, somebody says, hey, here's an opportunity. The ninja thought goes, oh, could be a scam. And then you're basing everything that you hear after that moment on this, like, vice versa the ninja thought so what we want to do is make everybody aware of what are your ninja thoughts what's your habitual ninja thought and let's change it to a open accepting expanding thought as opposed to a closed off not possible thought because if you don't believe it's possible you'll make that correct i think that's a brilliant tip jamie but that's not the only thing the two of you do is is uh, is eliminate ninjas Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, I, like that. <laughs> I do have a pair of nunchucks and let me tell you, they're very dangerous <laughs> to me. <laughs> yeah, so we basically help with mindset. We're authors, um, you know, so, and then we help the companies create raving fans from the inside out by basically, uh, in, and that's a, that's a dual part kind of statement there. Um, when a company creates a raving fan, like uh, I love using the company Zappos because oh, yeah. they have been fabulous. <laughs> That's there's, because you love shoes. <laughs> I, do, I do love shoes. But there's a great story. Um, there was a guy that was um, in the Zappos uh, warehouse, and he saw, um, he saw the people holding up um, papers, and then someone would run and grab the papers and put them in boxes. And then one time, a lady held up two papers, and two different people came and ran and got these papers and put them in two separate boxes. And the guy said, well, what's that about? And they said, well, the lady on the phone, um, it was her daughter's wedding, and she needed these shoes immediately, so we're going to ship the shoes out to her. But also, she had a cold on the phone, so we were shipping her some uh, herbal tea and some cough drops. I mean, that is like, that is an, that's an amazing story of creating raving fans. Yes. Now, right, and so when you create raving fans, everybody's going to talk about you. I mean, I wasn't even there and I'm talking about Zappos. And, and there's stories like this all over the place from Zappos. I'm not even into women's shoes and I talk about it. <laughs> well, except for that one pair. So, so then the next step would be to create raving fans from the inside out, meaning, um, meaning if you create raving fans from the employees first, they're going to, it's going to be, it's going to spill over to your clients. And even financially at the bottom end, if you are a raving fan of where you work, you're excited to go there. You're excited to be with the people. So if you're not feeling 100%, you don't go, oh, I'm just going to take one of my sick days. You don't want them. Sick days are an annoyance to you because you want to be at work. You want to be respected. You want to feel um, energized by the idea. And that's one of the things we want to look at is what's the first thought you have when you wake up? Are you like, oh, it's another day. Oh. Or is it, yeah, oh, great. I woke up before my alarm. I can't wait to get to work. I can't wait to achieve this. I'm going to have success today. I'm going to do this. We want to look at what those 
every day, every moment thoughts are because our thoughts are a reflection on our beliefs. Our thoughts drive our actions. Our actions create our reality. So if your reality- They create our results. Create our results, yeah. It's what you're experiencing. So if you're not getting everything you want, you gotta look at the way you're thinking. And, and that's, a, I, that's a great, great point to make to other entrepreneurs in terms of that ninja thought and the way they're thinking, but also their health from the inside out and the raving fans from the inside out, because if they're not their own raving fan, nobody else is going to be. I will tell you that nobody else is going to be. So that's you right. of you have this ability to position yourself to help folks on a number of levels create that that inner fire with people. Maybe fire's the not, wor not the right word because if you're healthy, maybe you don't have an inner fire. <laughs> I think you do. I think you have a spark. You know, like you got a, a spark in your eye and your step and your smile. But the <laughs> There is a radiance that comes from you when you're on fire and that radiance warms and um, accelerates those around you. And it changes the room when people walk in. Yeah. You know, people like that walk in the room and you're like, ooh, I feel great. Why do I feel great? This person's making me feel good. Which is so a very interesting thing for a boss. When a boss walks into a room, does the room go cold and scared or excited and alive? Wait, wait. That also goes for business owners. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah that's, we, did, we actually did a video recently on what kind of a leader are you? Yeah. Like, like, are you aware of what is in the wake of your ship? Oh yeah. You know, cause you're a ship driving this, this through and is there, is the wake, you know, is it, is there just shrapnel everywhere or is the, or are people in the wake pulling with you? Yeah. Being drawn forward by you or being knocked over out of the way by you. What I, kind of ship are you? What kind of leadership? Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> you know, whenever I have these two in front of me, I have no idea where the conversation is going. Typically, <laughs> when I interview, I can think a couple of questions ahead. Never <laughs> with these two. So if you ever interview folks, you have to be prepared for the discussion to go right or left or very right or very left. <laughs> flow with it but I want to kick it back to you all I know one of the issues that startup entrepreneurs have is thinking big and if you are going to be your own raving fan do you want to be the raving fan of you yourself and I or do you want to do what the two of you are doing and create greater impact with what you're doing so explain how you have this ability to say Gym ownership's not enough for us. We are going to take a serious pivot. It's going to hurt us financially. We are going to stand up and figure it out. And then we are going to continue to dream as big as we can. How do other people do that? Well, one of the reasons that we kind of did what we did was because we discovered that life is like um, a series of buckets and when, or Tetris. Like when all the buckets are full, you move to the next level. And even though we're working intensely with people's physical health, the mindset health needed to be on par for it to move forward. It and was then a bigger piece. The biggest stress for people was finances. Oh, I really love what you can do, but I can't afford my gym membership. I'm like, you can't afford not to have a gym membership because otherwise you've got all these other medical problems that are going to be on. And uh, relationship, communication, all these buckets need to be full um, to move in. That's the same as the body. The body needs to have all the cell components being um, provided for that cell to be a happy, healthy cell. A raving fan from the inside out, the cells in your own body, being excited by what you want to be. And so what was the question? Well, I basically was how <laughs> Jamie said he, he's such a rambler. You gotta watch him. So basically, basically what she was asking was how did we decide we wanted more? How did we oh, go, right, yeah. this isn't enough for me, I want to impact more people on a bigger level. That's right. Um you know, for us it's that I knew that we could. Yeah. And I knew that that the information we had was valuable. And I knew that we could, I, I mean, and my passion is helping people. And so is Jamie's, you know, our passion is helping people. So what if we could help more people? Like, how can you help? That's, and that was a question. How can we help more people? And then we were asking, well, how can we have more people and have more fun? Because, <laughs> because I'm in now. <laughs> <Yeah>. I'm in. <laughs> 
you know, and so, and because, you know, the, the gym was a drag and, um, and I, I love my, I love my clients. I love my clients. I love my employees, but I make, oh, you know, I don't miss that 10 p.m. call that they're not going to make it to the 5 a.m. class. Right, now, the trainer's not going to make yeah, it. Yeah, then now I have to get up at 3 in the morning. So, right. yeah, so I, I don't miss that, you know. Um, yeah. And to be able to help people on a different level. And like I was talking about earlier on, um, where I learned that I was serving people and wasn't serving people. Mm. Mm -hmm. you know? And I was frustrated with it because I was like, why did I not help this person? Why did this person end up uh, going back in her old ways and not losing a hundred pounds like she needed to. And she's, she can't even get out. She can't even drive a car, you know? So yeah, go ahead. That's very good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say also what we discovered was we could help a lot more people doing the most difficult thing. And the most difficult thing is taking the first step. Most people will think they have to get to a certain level of finances before they can become financially secure. No, you can start right now because it's the mindset, it's the, it's the tips, it's the tools. And it's the same with your fitness, with your health. The hardest thing to do is to get started and to have a conversation, to have a look at what you're currently doing. So we can go into a corporation and talk to a couple of hundred people and get them all excited about taking one small step. Every single person is then going to have a better health, a better life, a better sense of self-worth. And also, like you mentioned earlier about an entrepreneur, um, like how can I, what can I, am I capable, am I big enough to share? We have the habit of seeing what we're not achieving. That is a, a, a habit of the fight flight syndrome of what's not working so I can be safe and secure. Safe and secure is fun, but there's no growth there. So how to jump out of that and into the greatness of who you are is the Attitude of gratitude. Amy loves that, so I just stole her thunder. She says it all the time. But being grateful for what's taken place in your day today, because there's been some great things. The more you focus on what's been good, the more you're inclined to see it coming to you. You're more aware of it, and you take more advantage of it, and it grows. So, Jamie, you may have already answered this question, but my guess, if I ask it to you this way, you will come up with a whole different answer. So I am going to ask anyway, how do those of us take that first step to become our own raving fan? Oh, that is a great question. I think she asked me that question, Amy. <laughs> I did. I <laughs> okay, so you guys stole your attitude of gratitude statement. Go with it. It's a ninja thought. Oh, it is. It's changing that ninja thought. Oh, that's that mine. That first thought in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and how? And how? I don't want to steal all of your goodies, but how does somebody do that? Like today, I, I've had a terrible day. I missed appointments, and appointments oh. canceled on me. It's one of those types of days. Like just everything feels like it's going wrong. But when you step back and look at it, it's really still a pretty good day. How do you get up the next day and go, oh, I'm so excited? Well, the first thing you gotta do is congratulate yourself on being aware that things didn't go. It's that self-awareness and being grateful for who you are because you acknowledge something. Nothing's ever wrong, there's just better options. And that's what I, I used to teach with the improv is there's always a better way. And that's why our book is like dare to be a better you, not dare to be perfect. Perfection is a limitation. The idea of being a better moment, a better situation and accepting the fact that, hey, that didn't work out the way I thought it would. Good for me for observing that. And, and Go ahead. And then also focusing on the things that went good. Yes. I mean, because, you know, I had some crappy things today, too. And yeah. we all do. The exactly. crap happens in every happen. day. I agree with that. Yeah. And, you know, you know motivation is not, um, it is not like, uh, it, 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 it not goes away. It's like you need to take, you need to shower every day. Motivation is like that. It's, it's not just there. You know, you have to get yourself motivated every day. It's not something that comes natural. And it's not something that comes natural to most people. But it can become a habit. It can. You have to train yourself to have that habit. Don't just have a happy thought one day and go, oh, 
motivation doesn't work. It's like going, oh, I ate a carrot yesterday and I didn't lose any weight. Diets are ridiculous. No, <laughs> it's consistency. And you're going to have to write a note, put it on your bed. So as Find a video that you love, like a, mo a motivational video that's like four or five minutes and watch it every morning, like when you get yeah. out of bed. Yeah. You know, so, Tony Robbins or anybody or Virginia Phillips, whoever you want. Is that the exact same advice you'd give to somebody that's struggling to be their own raving fan that you all know when you open a business, it can feel like crickets in your business. You come out and you're like, this is a really great idea. Everybody's going to come and that it's you in the <laughs> cricket in the corner. Like, how, how do you get through those days and still feel like your own best raving fan you take action and that's any action it's pick up the phone it's get up and move from one corner to the other corner take, make a call make, clean up the environment clean up the environment work out do something just do something I, you know any action would work also look at how you can be a positive influence in someone else's life because when you take an action to serve, it amplifies in the environment. Also, you got to be aware that, like, I love nature. I grew up in Australia, and we were taught to be very aware of nature because it could kill you any second. But <laughs> apart from that, <laughs> no, you plant a seed in the ground, and you're looking at dirt. I was like, oh, it's dirt, it's dirt, but you still water it. Ah, oh, now it's wet dirt. But... After a few weeks, there's a little green shoot. Now, it's not a mansion, but you've got to be consistent. Continually water it. Continually love on it. Con continually see the potential of this giant fruit tree. And then, after a period of time, it'll start to grow. Then people will go, oh, hey, you've got a gorgeous fruit tree. Can I have some of that? And you're like, absolutely. Ten bucks That'll be $20. Tree. <laughs> Exchange rate. <laughs> I'm going to shop at Jamie's shop. <laughs> <laughs> he might not make any money and be out of business in 10 minutes, but that's all right. But we will have fun with that tree. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but I, you know, there are only a few minutes left here. I want you all to really promote, not, not necessarily promote because we don't do all that, really explain to us, yeah, in my group, I don't want people to sell, Let's, right. but tell us in terms of a promotional aspect, what it is you do, why would we want to connect with you, and how we could connect you to other people in our network. Well, um, can I offer them to come and watch our lives on Facebook? Can I do that? You can, yes. Okay, so we would love for you to come and watch our lives on Facebook because one of the things that we're going to start doing is we are going to start giving away vacations every Woo! time you come on to one of our lives live. And you can do that at facebook.com slash thehoneybear. And we give tips, we give advice just like we did. We help, we answer questions. Um, you know, we serve on that. So we, we, it's about giving and we find different companies that we like and we interview you and things like that. So yeah, just come join us there. What a great connection piece, but you also want to get connected to people that will buy your services. Tell us who those people would be. So we would want entrepreneurs that might have a Facebook group that they need help developing or um, they have a group of employees that they want us to come in and help with their wellness uh, program or um, things their like mindset, that. Their, their mindset. Their mindset, yeah. That uh, you can be successful within yourself and within what you're doing. And when you create little action steps and you achieve that action step, you create uh, dopamine in the brain. So you feel good about yourself. So don't think of the big task. Think of a step action. And you're going to be healthier in the brain and that flows through every other action in the body. Yeah. Well, look at that ding. What a great timing for that. I love it. I'm getting texts like crazy here. <laughs> <laughs> and and I know you all are taking time out for this. I appreciate it. Again, your company's name is? The Honey Dare. You can check us out at thehoneydare.com. And yeah. you two are? The Honeys, Amy and Jamie Honey. I made her a honey. I married her, and before she was that, she was not a honey. So <clears throat> I'm kind of pretty important here. There is some truth to that. These two do have membership within the group. At some point, we would love to see them there. And we are grateful that you are our raving fans.
We Ooh. are. We are your first biggest raving fan, Virginia. <laughs> we are particularly my first big raving fan, and I am so grateful for that. And here you are, one of my first interviews within my group, still being my raving fan. So thank you very much for that. And I am sure the people in this network and other folks will see us together again. Awesome. Woo. We adore you. Yep.